you have you seen or heard anything about these protests that's going on down here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are, all the protesters come from out of town. None of the actual black people that are in this town uh, go to the protests. In fact, most of them try to avoid the protests. I am your president of law and order. We didn't have protests last night. We had criminal acts. His death is on their hands. She's someone special. I'm following her and I am observing her and I'm also 100% you know, supporting. Right or wrong? But what what's what's San Luis Obispo known for? Because it's like it looks so set, uh, so sleepy, a sleepy town. I think it's the access to the beaches. Ah, okay. You know, so you get a lot of tourism, huh? Yeah, you get to the north, um, mm. Morro Bay. Okay. To the south, you know, Cuba City. Okay. How many beaches do you got uh, San Luis would have? It's more than one or two. If you're counting all the way from Santa Barbara all the way up the coast, you're looking at probably eight beaches. Okay. Is this like a rich area or is it a working class area? What? I think because um, the social structure, at one time it was, I think it was considered to be a high class value place. Oh, okay. It has lost its value on many, many issues. Mm -hmm. you know, many issues. Um, we still have many culture effects, mm -hmm. um, many different uh, types of uh, prejudice. Yeah, yeah. Many, many work. work. Yeah. Um, so it's still is it so they have any racial tensions now or is it really creepy? No, I think since I've been here since I was a kid, no, I would say no. Okay, okay. I that well, like I said, you know, were you around when like uh, when when the protest was here? Did you see anything unusual? No, I, like I, I don't pay attention anymore. Okay. Beyond that, you know, I, I go to the voting issue. Mm -hmm. I, I sit on the ballot. Good for me, I free my taxes and all that. Oh, okay. You know, I write it down. Coming out here, she's ignorant. She's ignorant. She's ignorant. Hey, you can leave. Mm -hmm. I know. She has a pregnant. What if it's our law enforcement that's kidnapping people? 
Uh, would was there something? Would you do anything, or when you, if you witness that? Of course, it's wrong. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, because you earlier said that you you know you just pay taxes and vote, but if there's something like that that's going on in a place like this, the also thing too, some people do want to get kidnapped. Some people do want to get kidnapped. Some well, uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, you know the thing? Uh, I, 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 I find that little, kidnapping is not it's, it's, it's against the person's will, but if someone wants to go somewhere with the person. That's a different distinction. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that I was trying to uh, get a get grasp on. Uh, such a place like this, it would be probably a shock if something like that was to go on here, wouldn't it? Because you know, it's such a quiet town, and you said, you know, you didn't see anything in the protest or like that, but um, what, what if it was going on? Don't bother with it. Don't bother with it. Okay. Uh, well, that's... Uh, uh, that's that's unique. <laughs> uh, so, uh, did you, was you around when uh, they had protests out here before? Uh, yeah, for Occupy? Yeah. Yeah, I went to uh, they, yeah. All the protesters come from out of town. None of the actual black people that are in this town uh, go to the protests. In fact, most of them try to avoid the protests. Why do they try to avoid them? It's uh, we're under the assumption that it's uh, instigated by uh, people on the dark web in order to incite violence and to bring uh, distraction to the cops so that they, uh, other crimes can be committed. Oh, I see. Let me, let me ask you a hypothetical question. If you notice someone being snatched and put into a vehicle by law enforcement um, being kidnapped, would you guys say anything or would you guys let? Yeah, I don't think the uh, police department around here uh, would really do anything like that. There, uh, there has been uh, fake police, people that dress up like police officers. Mm -hmm. uh, so what about you? Have you noticed any uh, racial tensions going on here? Racial tensions, no more so than usual. You know, you got like around here, there's not, there's not like your like see the gangs you see like in LA or like in the other major cities, you know, where there's like you know, a lot like people, you know, walking the same colors and cruising on. Well, that's gang violence. I'm talking about racial tensions, or for example, uh, police brutality or, or things of that nature. Well, not so much. See, all right. In my own personal life, I get I get messed well, up you know, by people uh, just want to jump. The police the brutality uh, is equal for everyone around here. No. Oh. Whether they're white or black, they have a, talk to several black people. The friends of mine that live around here and they say that the least around here uh they uh screw everybody over mm, okay. rather than just the black people over like like in some places mm, okay oh. on july 1st 2020 there was a kidnapping of a couple of activists here in San Diego. the incident shocked the community of activists it shocked the family and it, it became a issue that it garnered my attention. Someone reached out to me and asked me to cover the situation. So here I am in San Luis Obispo, covering it and trying to find out why would such an incident occur here in San Luis Obispo. This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and House, and I thank you all for listening and seeing. And let us hope we meet in the line of understanding. This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and House. I'm here and speaking to one of the activists here, and he's going to give us perspective what uh, the breakdown of what happened. His name is Kevin. Kevin, thank you for joining us. Hello, nice to meet you. Good. Thank you for having me. So, um, tell us what happened here. Well, um, I got here late. I didn't know that um, the, there was an actual protest. When I came here, everybody was here relaxing. The protest was over. There were police officers approximately Shop over here, get some food. I go leave a couple of protesters come over with me. I don't see Tiana or any of the other, other maybe figureheads. A couple figureheads were there. But then uh, we get make a call, we find out she's been arrested. Come back over here, and it's mass chaos and confusion. And there's no police officers around, but there's at least 20, 30 people still out here. 
upset and confused and not knowing what's going on or why anything of this is happening. Um, got a little tidbits of information, some more information, and then I finally saw the video. Mm -hmm. um, what did the video show? The video shows her being handcuffed, shows about seven or eight police, cop police officers, I should say, and um, her clearly stating I am not resisting. Mm -hmm. I am not resisting. Um, it happened about, I want to say about 400 feet over there. Where, by that super park across the street. Okay. So that's where it initially happened. Then it went on to the car Process, the police assaulted a bunch of people, in the, and in the video, you definitely can see there's one person being punched directly in their head, and this person is actually asking, What is going on? Why are you doing this? Now, to backtrack, because I was not here, this is eyewitness accounts, and we're talking more than more than 20 people who have seen the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, she went to her car, uh, one of our other activists, his name is Marcus. Went to give her a hug, uh, and then the process, a police uh, cruiser rolls rolled by, and a police, uh, me, and a motorcycle cop rolled by, stopped towards the front, and then all of a sudden, all at once, about four or five more cruisers came over. They all jumped out of the car, they grabbed her, put her in handcuffs, and that's when she went to get. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. Threw her in the car, and that's where. I come in at that point. So the car is gone. I'm getting information. Uh, immediately go out to the jail on Kansas Street. She's not at the jail. Our city mayor comes comes into the jail. Then we find out she's actually still at the precinct. And she's been there for more than two and a half hours. Which, okay, no problem. I understand. But then we find out they're not releasing her to jail because they want to make a press release, hmm. which I've never heard of before in my life. Mm -hmm. So press release happens. We ended up going back to uh, the precinct, and I'm with the mayor. I meet the mayor there. Then we go back out to the jail. And from there, that's when we find out the charges. Um, but we also find out of another activist of ours who, uh, who was charged for assaulting a police officer. We find out his charges. Um, basically, about five and a half hours later, Tiana was released on her own OR, and then we had to post bail uh, for the other person out there. Um, he was released about an hour later, and from there, um, we are here. And currently, you know, our Tiana has been put on the Lalo and uh, kind of put on the release factor until further notice. Um, and that's and that's okay. But since that time, you know, we've had um, three silent protests and we've done some other stuff. And we have meetings with our local, um, with our mayor. We also will have meetings with our local sheriff, um, Ian Parkinson. He was the reason that this even happened, that protest even happened. It's just some statements that he said, basically saying that Racism, you know, that that form of racism uh, doesn't exist, mm -hmm. and it does. It exists everywhere. Right. Just because you don't see it, you know, because unfortunately, you know, he is behind a desk, you know, mm -hmm. so he's not out in the field. But I want to say that his statements kind of hurt me because I know him as a, personally. Um, he, he's a, actually a very good person, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, I don't know where the statements came from, and it's. It's just, it's just bad. It's all bad. It's all bad because he's not, in my mind, he's not a racist. He just made a very bad statement. And honestly, he needs to come forth and apologize and just be real with your position. You know, as the sheriff of the county, you know, you gotta, you gotta take into account everything. And you can't just assume something because of what you think you don't see. I want to know too, as, because I, it's, it's new to me because I'm not from here and mm -hmm. LA has his own uh, animal, if you will. Um, what is St. Louis about? Does there, like you said, there's racial incidents here, but I've interviewed a few people and they like, share the same thing with the sheriff's beliefs. 
that it don't exist or it's uh, outside agitation. What is San Luis Obispo like? What tell us about this? This like, place is mainly full of rich retired white people. They're, and then, if you're not rich and retired, then you're just a very, very wealthy person that lives here. Um, that being said, you know the minorities here. There, there are lots of Hispanic people here, but there's not many black people. Okay. Pretty much uh, the last time I remember the the statistics of it, but basically out of every ten people that live here, a foot basically is a black person. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> not even we don't even represent a half a point or something like that. Mm -hmm. out here. Um, but I've lived out here the majority of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from the Bay Area, but I've lived out here for a long, long time, and I would say I have seen scores of black families, you know, come here and want to live here and thrive here. Mm -hmm. and Why haven't they? One, it's really expensive to live here. Mm -hmm. And two, it's really expensive to live here. Mm -hmm. um, and three, a lot of people just don't see the opportunities mm -hmm. here, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but for, you know, the other cultures out here, they do pretty decently, but with the exception of, you know, like, the Hispanics, they gather together very well, you know, and they, they do very well out here as a, as a unit. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of black people move out here and they don't have a lot of families mm -hmm. out here, so it's kind of you against the world at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and then this town is also like you know, family owned, you know, mm -hmm. it's the Sinsheimer family. Every school that has a name behind it, that was a family that lived out here. Mm -hmm. So and I believe this park too um, is, a, is in regard to, to families that lived out here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Madonna's, which the Madonna family is still out here. They're a very big, huge thing out here. Um, the law firms that are out here, um, it just, it's a mainly you know, white town. It's, it's, it's run by, you know, white people. And I'm not saying they don't do a good job, because right? everybody has their faults, and everybody has their strengths, but there are a lot of things that need to change, you know. I heard uh, from an older gentleman that lived here uh, during this time mm -hmm. he said um when he was growing up there was a lot of racial incidents here and he he was was it white he, so he it, and he says you know the older the generations that he grew up with and after him um they may have changed he might not be seen that way now but uh, do you know anything about the racial tensions that went on here i or heard about in it i know you're not you're a young man but of course there was obviously something going on here i don't know a lot about the racial tensions that been that that aspect. Uh, I mean, I have, I have been, you know, had racism put on me by the police mm -hmm. several times. Mm -hmm. from, basically, from being a teenager, being able to drive up until December to uh, uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, the only real racial divide that I do remember of, because I went to the local high school, and we did have a problem up there with the uh, skinheads, and it came pretty close to. All the Hispanics and all the all, everybody of color almost, you know, basically picked sides one day, and it had to been for the actual principal mm -hmm. at the time. There would have been a racial fight there. It'd, it'd have been a racial because mm -hmm. it was it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. And that person diffused that mm -hmm. by kind of getting kind of meeting with us and asking us what needs to happen and mm -hmm. what we do. You know, we saw we saw enough changes that we're move back down or relax down, I should say. That's smart. Um, it's, it's interesting. So what are the uh, highlights here? What are the things to do when people come out here? Well, there's a lot of things to do. There are tons of microbreweries out here. There are tasting rooms out here. Uh -huh. um, our, well, no thanks to COVID, but when COVID wasn't around, mm -hmm. our downtown scene is extravagant. We no. get people that come from everywhere just to come down here because it's a small town feel but you still get the big city atmosphere oh, you see, know, in, in our clubs down here. As, and I'm one of the DJs out here too so oh, I definitely okay, know. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, there's, I, there's a lot to do. I was good because when I was coming in here I, I, it, it reminded me of maybe our of the with the cross of uh, Mississippi burning kind of thing. <laughs> Not big, in, 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 well, I'm gonna say in a bad way, but it's just yeah. like when I was starting to ask questions, I got that feel of like, okay, you know, we don't have no problem with our Negroes down here. Uh, you know, it's just outside agitation. You know, that's basically almost literally what the guy was saying. I'm like, okay, this is not <laughs> exactly what I, I, you know, I wanted to hear, but then it also is what I needed to hear because sometimes 
that's what the world that they live in that they don't realize that under the surface there may be some um, some tension there that they they are completely oblivious about absolutely yes i agree, I agree with you there. that as for the outside influences that's a bunch of bull <laughs> now what they mean by that is they're saying well you got these kids who go to quest in cal poly they mm -hmm. don't live here mm -hmm. well guess what they live here mm -hmm. so they're part of our society they're right part right of our community right right so that just throw that out to the river right that that uh, mm -hmm. so and even with our with some with some of the activists out here, you know, there are some that live here, and there are some that are students, you know. But they, but they also see something that needs to change. Absolutely. So obviously they have something together. So. Absolutely. <laughs> and they they've seen it. They've yeah, seen yeah. the racism. They've been. They've had things happen to them that you know wouldn't happen to anybody else mm -hmm. you know, in, in general. Mm -hmm. Whether it be walking in the store and wondering why you're being stared at or watched or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. As a matter of fact, that's gotten a lot worse lately. No, really? Yeah, I mean, this whole COVID thing, one, makes everybody scared. Mm -hmm. And then you add into the fact that, you know, they see Seattle, they see Portland, mm -hmm. they see what's going on in Dallas. Or oh, they see the shirt, but we didn't yeah. have uh, black. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that just gets them on edge. Or yeah. they see this right here mm -hmm. and wonder what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. what's, what, why, why is this guy doing this? Okay, mm -hmm. well, hey, let's just watch him, you know. And I got to admit, like, yesterday, or Monday was my birthday, mm -hmm. and I was in Ross, and I was being watched. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got like five people in the whole store, that's, you know, and I'm being watched, and there's several other people all around. And it just, it made me feel like, wow, I thought these days were like, pretty much over. Especially, you know, you walk into a store, and you got a pocket full of money mm -hmm. that you've earned legally. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely, absolutely. And just, just how, it's just how they make you feel out of it, you know. There are, there are a lot of times you can be anywhere, um, anywhere in one of these parks, in a store, even eating dinner. You know, I've had I've had people literally get up and move because they didn't feel comfortable sitting next to me and my friends. You know, That's whether hard. it be friends of color or just mm -hmm. me, a couple of white friends, a couple of Mexican friends. You know, I've uh, even had instances, and this this is true, where. Uh, we're gonna say, uh, I'll just throw an example, Olive Garden. And we're all dressed up nice, you know, we're dressed up to go out and went to Olive Garden a little bit early, had a couple of drinks, and just literally watched some older people get up and say, I would like to be moved. Uh, I don't feel comfortable sitting next to the next week. And, I, and, that, and that's happened on several people. That's happening. When I say several occasions, like recently, <laughs> it's recent, you know, a couple of years. So therein lies the point that there is a problem here. There is a racial tension problem here, yeah. and and people are resistant to and acknowledging that, which is what I, I suspected because the way when any time I hear people curbly shut it down, I'm like, okay, I know full well I've been I've been black for a long time. You know, <laughs> I know, I, and I went to school in a predominantly white area, very Christian reform. I know how things get down. It, it is, it's just, you just don't want to see it or you just are uh, willfully ignorant. Right. Um, so I, I wanted to say, what do you think needs to change here in San Luis Obispo? For our police, honestly for me, they need to be better educated. I feel that you cannot become a police officer in six months can't be a sheriff in six months. And the only reason why I say that is because you can't get a degree in six months. Yeah, that's yeah, right. You got, a, you know, two years, 18 months? Mm -hmm, as, mm -hmm. as soon as you can get a degree, it took me four, oh, was it five years? Yeah, but Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, full full degree, but you know, if you mm -hmm. want to get a trade school vocational degree, it's yeah. 18 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in my opinion, they need to be better educated. You know, better educated, you know, the psychology side of things, you know, the economic side of things. And realizing just because you know, I have a, a like for instance, I have a nice watch on. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't think that I didn't pay for this. Yeah, or you, you know? or you have a, got a gained it by criminal activity. Exactly. That's another thing. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. that's my deal behind that. Mm -hmm. I just I, I I would like to see that. I would like to see our police force better educated, have a better understanding. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying get rid of them because we need we need police. You know. But you also got to remember, as a cop, you choose for that employment. Mm -hmm. This isn't something you're forced to do, and I want everybody to know that. Mm -hmm. It's important. That's the one thing I would like to see with the police force. In the way of just community relations, I would just like the people, you know, especially folks to know that 
we're, we're here. We're not going anywhere. We're not here to harm you. We're just like anybody else, you know? Like, I deliver groceries to people, mainly they're elderly. And I don't care what color you are. I'm, I'm just delivering your groceries, making sure you got the food, you know? And I don't want you to feel uncomfortable because I'm a black person delivering your food. And that has happened a couple times, you know? And you just kind of got to just smile it off and laugh it off. Um, but that's my thing. I just want everybody to understand we're here, you know? We're just like the next person. Just because my skin is brown doesn't mean I won't come drink a beer with you and talk whatever. That's how I look. Thank you very much for yeah. your time. I got him up so early today and uh, happy belated birthday. Thank you. This is Theo Henderson from We and House. Uh, we are down here to investigate and expose the corruption that has gone on with the kidnapping and uh, harassment of Tiana Arada and her, uh, her other fellow activists. We are still trying to reach a, a light or reach a understanding on the matter and stay tuned for more. Thank you very much. This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and House. Here we are on the trail of trying to find out and make sense of this craziness that's happened where one of the activists, Tiana Rada, has been kidnapped uh, as well as harassed by the Los, uh, say Los Angeles Police, the San Luis Obispo Police, where police are sometimes can be universally bad I guess they pass it on so here in the studios is a lady who goes, uh, she'll introduce herself and we'll go in to talk about what is going on hi my name is Kaylin so I'm a San Luis Obispo resident I've been here for the past three years and I'm a student at Cal Poly so um, I've been participating in the community activism and protests of San Luis Obispo for about the past two and a half months um, I've seen Tiana do amazing things for this community and to see what happened, the egregious acts that uh, happened here in Mitchell Park in San Luis Obispo were really just a shock because you see this all the time on the news but you never like imagine that it'll happen to someone that you really care about and someone you actually know and you know our I believe county sheriff is a county sheriff. Yeah, Ian Parkinson made a statement a few days ago and he said racism exists everywhere but the county of San Luis Obispo but obviously oh as you can see um, from the story that it exists everywhere and no one is immune to it no county no city is immune to this and we have to do the best possible um, you know policies and actions that we can to um, help all black lives survive and what's going on so I, I want to say, you know, because uh, San Luis Obispo is a very wealthy area. So tell us, let's lead up to what, um, Tiana is an activist. So what has she been active on, particularly like the Black Lives Matter um, as, I, as, as well. So what, what other works have she been doing that she's so prominent about and why would she be targeted? So she's been working with um, Race Matters Slow, uh, a community um, organization, but she's mainly been organizing with fellow black youth in the area mm -hmm. to organize just tons of protests the past few months, um, mm -hmm. especially after everything that happened with uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Right. So they've been organizing in places like Mitchell Park, where we are today, um, in front of the Slow County Courthouse and everything, and organizing just a ton of marches, having beautiful, eloquent speeches, and really just gathering the community um, around one common goal, and that is to educate the community about racism and to end racism in Slow. In the studios is uh, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus, for showing up. Um, can you tell us what happened on the night of uh, the incident? So on Tuesday night, um, sorry, I cannot remember the exact day, but July 21st, July 21st. Thank you very much. So on that night, we had just finished our um, our rally, I guess you could say. Um, we gathered back here at the gazebo in Mitchell Park. And um, before we had left, we had noticed that there was four officers on their bikes um, across the park and they were just sitting there and for some reason, we all just felt like something seemed a little off about that. Um, we had also seen that they had pulled over two cars prior to the arrest. And the the way they had pulled over the cars, it just seemed like those cars may have had people that were associated already with us. So they were maybe just wanting to question them. 
but after that, we I had seen right before we had walked out of the park another officer or two officers in a car had pulled up, and um, I guess you could say maybe off an of instinct. I mean, being black, you can just tell that when someone something's about to go down, something's <laughs> about to go down. You can yeah, tell that yeah. after organizing something and what had happened on the freeway, uh, the incident that occurred that maybe something would just occur out of this and so I wanted to make sure that she had left before they had left um, but then as soon as we were just waiting for that they had decided to make a move and then another officer two officers in a car had um, drove the car right into the intersection they didn't hit anybody or anything but they had sped into it stopped and came out as if they were trying to yes like they were trying to kidnap someone or someone of high interest and so when taking her, they had hit one of her friends, had pushed another friend of theirs to the ground. And um, as they were doing this, uh, my, I know particularly this mo at this moment, any involvement that anybody does, you could find yourself either being arrested or being hurt. Um, but for me, I just found it so crucial after all these incidences that you see on TV, and especially of recent, especially with black women, that I had to do something. So I didn't get physical with the officers, but I made sure to hug her as hard as I could and to just try and prevent them from detaining her without any actual lawful reason because they were not telling us why she was being detained or where she was being taken. So all those things were just too... They just made me too anxious with, like I said previous, to the things that have been happening with black women and black people in general, that mm -hmm. they get taken and you don't particularly know what's happening. Right. And we also had this march in, con in conjunction with um, the uh, events that were happening with in Portland. So people that Trump has hired, he's taking them in unmarked you, cars. Exactly. And so not that Ian Parkinson is directly affiliated with Trump, but taking a message from his book and doing something similar like that it makes you anxious so you don't know so you want to do as much as you can to prevent that from happening without the proper answers so I wanted to do that they pushed me off of course um, they put her in the back of the car she sped off uh, they sped off I tried to you know you're such in a heated moment that all I thought about is I just wanted to chase down the car like a dog and see if I could do something that didn't work I came back um, and as they were still around the area you know there's a whole bunch of us just asking where are they taking her why she's being taken in it goes from we can't tell you oh to this one reason to we might she might be there we can't tell you and you can tell that that the actions that they're taking and how we're coming about them I mean KSBY was still there so they had caught this so the fact that they're not giving us any of these reasons it, they, you could tell that they they messed up and so they gathered everyone really quickly and left and so we went to the first station on Santa Rosa and next to Walnut and they had already barricaded it so from my perspective if you are in the lawful right to take somebody, why would you have this barricaded down? I mean, I can understand the aggression of the people take, uh, that will come to there, but if you're on all lawful rights, you have nothing to hide, you have every right to take her, you can have everybody yell at you, but you know you're within your rights. The question I had, that's even deeper than that, is that um, I was uh, informed by Kevin is that they had, instead of taking her to jail, they held her for two hours for a press release. Yes. That's not even, is that correct? Yes, that, that is actually correct. So. After realizing that we could not enter into the in the Santa Rosa um, uh, department, right. that we went to the county jail and waiting there for her arrival, and, you know they they tell us, oh, we're we're processing her. She'll be here in a second or in, in an hour or so. But that whole time, while we were waiting, we then saw that Slow PD had already came out with a narrative. So before there, she's even booked properly, and really the case is even really played out. They're already making a narrative already on their on their Instagram or Facebook and we were already looking at the comments and so that doesn't help out before the story or the whole narrative is out to give your own perspective to then have the people within who one believe in you already mm -hmm. to believe in that and then other outsiders who don't know then are gonna go to that story and then make their story based off of that that's one of the things that I noticed that law enforcement does, that does it and not just not just San Luis Obispo they have a very uh, perverse knack of making sure that they create the story about the people that they are a person of color is the criminal and paint that picture in the mind even though that that's not true and they know that people who uh, blindly bootlick or, or or deify police officers they're not going to question that they do anything wrong because and they're not going to be out here on the protest because they feel that they're doing their job or doing a hard job and they should be uh, we for forever should be grateful for any type of abuse that they put our way um so caitlin uh, did you see this happen i was not I had just gone home, but I remember just the energy of like the area right right before I left was feeling a bit off. Um, 
I don't know if Kevin kind of gave a rundown of what the protest was like. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was feeling a little bit off, and we noticed there were cops just surrounding the whole area the whole time, and I was like, you know what, it's time to get out, so, yeah. One of the things, too, um, it, was, it, it, it's, it was intimated, and I wanted to make sure I get clarification, was the police stalking her prior to the protest? Because I heard there was, that was going on as well. Um, I cannot give a direct answer on whether or not they were, but at, after the event, we, and after she was taken, we had heard that there was already an unmarked car waiting for her at home mm -hmm. in case somehow the cops here were not able to get her. Maybe they thought maybe she would have walked home or we would all been together mm -hmm. and something like that. So prior to this event, I do not know if they had already had this planned, but I know during the event, um, using her First Amendment right and someone else, they had made statements um, talking about the comments that Ian Parkinson had made and uh, Deanna, um, the head of... Uh, Is that Cantrell? Deanna Cantrell? Yes, or? yes. They had both made statements about um, both of those officers. And then the events on the, on the freeway, I think then that those two, uh, Ian Parkinson and Deanna, then decided to have that go... Uh, decide to make that plan go through. And so after the event, they had already had that set. They had somebody waiting for her just in case at home. So mm -hmm. definitely, if not before, during they had set up a, mm -hmm. a plan to take her in um, as if she was a terrorist or someone of high interest. So what happens now? What, 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 do, you, what do you want to achieve out of this? Because um, this is shocking to me, and I know it's shocking to the rest of the world that's gonna hear this because it's a scary time and we don't anticipate that even though I may have issues with the police, I don't expect them, which is why I get very uh, upset about to break the law or to abuse their power. What do we want to accomplish out of this? What do we want to know in order for us to help Tiana? Um, well, what I want to see first in order to help Tiana is, you know, security footage from the surrounding areas mm -hmm. to really bring light to this, another side of the story because there's always two sides to a story. There's multiple parts. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just one dimensional. So that's what I want to see. And I just want my community and communities uh, all around San Luis Obispo and the central, central Coast to still band together um, for Tiana and organize on her behalf because we need to continue this movement. We can't just put on one person to do this. Mm -hmm. And holding police accountable for their actions. Like in the future, I want to see police departments defunded. I want to see the abolition of police. That's what I personally want to see. So, you know, current, future, and uh, all along down the road, that's what I want to see. Okay, what, is, what, do, you, what do you want to see? Uh, if not, sim all, basically all the same things that she wants. Um, I would like to see out of this case, I would like everybody who, I would like every able, able-bodied person to Yes, get the correct information about Tuesday's night's event and then actually contact the DA and tell them that what they're doing is wrong. Not only are they giving her five charges, but two of those charges are felonies and felony charges will ruin someone's life. Mm -hmm. And not and, and Tiana is a woman, but she is 20 years old. She's still a girl. She is somebody who is still growing up and she has a future. She's planning to go to college. These things will affect her future. Them they are trying to make an example out of someone for using their first amendment for just trying to speak up about events that not only affect her but others like her other people around her and other people that aren't like her but still fall in the same category being discriminated like her and these are all events that happen here in slow that slow pd won't take initiative in they happen around her and she just she just wants to do something about it so that's very important that gets done but then i would like to also see yes like the sl slow in general they have the statement that slow is the happiest city in, in america okay so and <laughs> oprah made that which is also i think funny for her to coin that and not really be part of this county like that so for me when someone makes the statement or if that's the statement of the city it needs to be actually it needs to be effective it needs to be built on the fact that we see these we see racism we see bigotry we see these things but we attack it we take it down effectively we raise that we make we make the numbers of which all these incidents happen down to the most minute and that we actually then have that name the happiest city in america because we see these things we acknowledge them and we take care of them not because someone wants to make that quote and it only it's only sufficient to those 
who aren't actually affected to this area. All right, I think that's well said. And also, one of the things I want to point out with the two, we always say that children are the future as well as the young people are the future in changing a lot of things that have been half, uh, let slide or let fester by the older generation. They've only did so much and they have basically have not, um, they have passed on the mantle. So if she's getting arrested and giving these charges, that's also did, uh, is sending a message to yes. people not to speak up for your rights. Mm -hmm. yes. to, to keep your head down and allow abuse to happen. And that's abusive. And despite the legal enforcement um, that uh, happens, I had uh, one question before I, 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 I log off. I wanted to ask both of you. Um, one of the things is, why is it that people here in Santa Luis Obispo don't realize there's racial tensions? What? So I just want to, before I answer that, I want to yeah. go back to the previous um, question. I think you know, we kind of failed Tiana as a community. Everyone let her lead, which was great. You know, she's an amazing activist, a beautiful woman, just an amazing spirit, but we still need to protect black women at all costs. You know, black trans women, women black femmes, black queer women, every black woman needs to be protected. So that's kind of my input on the last question. And again, um, Dan Dow is our district attorney of uh, San Luis Obispo County, so it's public information, his email and phone number, so you know, contacting them would be an amazing help. And back to the question about why people in SLO want to disregard any racial tension. I mean, coming as a student at Cal Poly SLO, we had a blackface incident two years ago. It was my freshman year, mm -hmm. where a man at named... the happiest place in the world. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> where a Imagine man that. <laughs> named Kyler Watkins, affiliated with the uh, national fraternity Lambda Chi Alpha, mm -hmm. um, did blackface, and it's all over the internet. Um, his affiliates, you know, dressed up as quote unquote gangsters, um, like Latinx gang gang gangsters, and it was just a complete embarrassment to the reputation of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Mm -hmm. And I've talked, I've sorry, I've spoken to the president of the um, university, Jeffrey Armstrong, and he's just been completely unhelpful. He has the same um, mentality as everyone else. They just want to disregard what's happening and you know just keep on getting the money from people who want to you know remain oblivious to actual real issues and i've talked to so many students i've lost a lot of friends from just people who don't want to you know inform themselves they want to remain ignorant because a lot of people come from wealthy communities in colorado seattle Marin County, the Bay Area, Walnut uh, Creek, you know, a lot, and Encinitas, California, mm -hmm. the really nice parts of LA, like Beverly Hills, Glendale, mm -hmm. a lot of kids come from there, and that's like half of our city, so they just want to remain ignorant for the rest of their lives. They're not majoring in these majors like women's and gender studies, ethnic studies, um, all of that, and our curriculum fails students. We don't even have to take ethnic studies classes. We have to take like U.S. history. And we all know what U.S. history is all about. It's the white people's history. Mm -hmm. It's not about who actually built this country and what land we're on. Mm -hmm. And we're actually on Chumash land right now. So, That's you know, a native indigenous uh, uh, tribe's land. Yeah. yeah, from I think it's like Malibu mm -hmm. up to, uh, let's say, Paso Robles. But yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, to basically piggyback off of everything that she said, since she's you know, so on point about it, Living here, so I've lived in San Luis Obispo for 14 years alone. I was up in Paso Robles County prior to this, and I was born in San Dimas. So, kind of coming from LA County to here, basically what she has said, this county in general, like any any county, any city, mm -hmm. they're built of a whole population. You know, you have every type of class in it. But with this county, like so many other do, they they want to only mostly po be populated by those of upper class they that's the people that they're trying to attract mm -hmm. um san luis, Co san luis county is a, is a mini santa barbara essentially um it's reflecting off of that um you find this and and so in conjunction with that the people who want to flock here are people who are associated with that mind frame high society people yes um those on the higher scale and so those people and not all people but most of those people obviously their mind frames are built off of making sure that their families and themselves are okay and mostly those people being white mm -hmm. regardless if they know directly or indirectly it's still direct the actions that they've taken or not taken have their i.e. their white privilege affect the community 
And this community is, like I've said, the happiest city on earth because it's trying to base itself off of, well, just because everything else happens in the world, we can still be the brightest town in the world. And that's trying to negate everything that can happen around here. So it's the mind frame of the people. And, and to also say, if Cal Poly wasn't here, this town would be mostly dominated by elderly white people mm -hmm. because that's the the liberal side of this town really does come from Cal Poly, comes from Cuesta. It comes from people yep. who want to question the authority. So that's so that's how you can already see that the town itself it, it's it's not even wholly within what that statement is said. Yeah. That statement is built off of just trying to build publicity mm -hmm. to bring more people who want that idea into this town. But there, are, this town, I mean, but also the location of where this is, it's a beautiful town. It's a beautiful city. Everybody has the right to be here. But obviously, like anywhere else, that it's beautiful and has beautiful commodities and so forth. There are those who want to take that away from others who want to experience that. And so one of the main things is, yes, is racism. How could there be racism in such a beautiful town like this with such beautiful people, apparently? Well, that's not the case because those beautiful people are human beings. Are human beings. <laughs> and, it, and those human beings are choosing to, to say that racism doesn't exist and that we're ugly and we're, we're causing all this pain. We're, we're causing all these things for, for wanting to speak up about it. But w like the post, I made a post the other day that I had seen um, it said, if we stand, you're mad, we, 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 uh, we protest, you're mad, um, I forget, there was another one that said you're you mad, kneel. but if, if, you, if you kneel, if we kneel, you're mad, but if we die, you're, you're, you're silent. So mm -hmm. that's very much plated here in San Luis Obispo, and especially with Ian Parkinson's words the other day saying that he doesn't believe that systemic racism uh, exists here or that the Black Lives Movement is not effective here because that doesn't exist here and that the only racism well, the only prejudice that he experiences is that when he puts on his uniform. So, I mean, what what has to be said about that? Please, please think that they're the only ones who are treated differently because of what they wear. But they choose to wear that. They choose to put on the badge. The actions that they have taken since the beginning, when they have formed, have not backed up what their statements have. That, the statements that they try to state state about themselves, mm -hmm. and that everybody else who is born of their color, we're, we're the problem. We're, we're, the, we're the problem. We're the ones who choose to make the problems on you. So it's, this city is very ass backwards. It's, the sun is not up. It's very cloudy. Well, you know what? I think it's like this is the most major uh, colossal gaslighting of it, of it all is to say that there's no racism that doesn't exist here. It's just like it floats over San Luis Obispo and floats off into like an ozone uh, or a vacuum. Other cities, but it's like, and then the idea of the blue lives matter nonsense. Like, you know, they're being picked on. No one's picking on. We just decide to pick on police because they just have a uniform on. That's just really very, very alarming that they would say something like that. So, yes. I mean, blue lives can't matter because blue lives don't exist. <laughs> exactly. Period. Yeah. And also, like you know, this city, at least, if you're gonna say racism doesn't exist, classism exists, mm -hmm. and classism is rooted in racism, Indeed. so, Indeed. you know, that's just what we want people to realize, like, we have real issues going on here, but people just want to live their happy little lives, um, first of all, disregarding a pandemic 24-7, um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'll say on that. Well, I thank you all for your coming in and your time, and I know you guys have been very busy, um, and I will return and I would probably follow up to see hopefully um, how things fare and I would like to interview uh, you guys again as well as Diana and her family and her lawyer if you will, um, hopefully this weekend. But <laughs> this is Theo Henderson from Weedian House. Is there any other protests or any other things that we should be aware about? Um, okay, so I'm helping organize a kids protest on oh. August 9th in we want to make it as accessible as possible. We're getting an ASL interpreter, a Spanish interpreter, um, right here in Mitchell Park. And we want to also like block off parking spaces for families who want to attend and just crack the window open and safely social distance. And just ed educate our entire community, um, our privileged community, because this is a privileged community, about uh, systemic racism. And you can't be too young to learn about racism. So, Absolutely. Yeah, we're educating. <laughs> 
um, little children, middle age children, uh, bigger age children, and it's going to be organized by high school youth. Like, I'm not even helping organize all of it. Uh, high schooler is doing all of this. Like, she's o overseeing all the committees. So it's really just going to be an amazing plethora of people. And uh, there's going to be music and snacks. And we just want to make it just such a great educational opportunity. And we're going to march around Mitchell Park with all the little youngins. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's essentially what's planned for next and to basically piggyback on that, which what is really nice about it is the fact that, yes, the high school is the one that's putting this together. So when we talk about that the youth is the, the next generation growing up, you can see that not only with this with like climate change and so forth, the youth are really taking it upon themselves to make sure that their future is better because, yeah, if San Luis wants to say it's the happiest city on earth, well, it'll be, it needs to actually be that way for the next generation and actually be like that instead of cloudy um so it's nice to see that someone yeah who i believe she's 16 i'm 25 mm -hmm. that's you know that's 11 years of a difference so that could be a very different we can have very different mind frames that you can see that with even with five years people can have very different mind frames so for her to take this as serious as maybe i have when i've started that that'll hopefully be that that'll give me that gives me hope to see that that's the future we want. We want to change that. And yes, to have this event here in San Luis Obispo and to make it as almost one bodied for all for San Luis, that's that's the whole point. So we can all be on the same page, so we can all understand the things that are happening in San Luis to actually, yes, to make things progressively better for all. And just to have these all these conversations outside and at home. Um, and for people to have them at school, to have them at comfortable, to, have, to feel comfortable about them if they if they if they're feeling like that those conversations already happening around their city it'll be easier for them to talk about it individually well there you have it it's like i they're sending a very deeper message the younger generation is sending a message uh, a lot of times i always hear the older generation always saying the disappointment with the youth but i think this is where the opposite the opposite is is i think the youth are disappointed in the older because they have failed in so many respects of listening and understanding that they need to change and be part of the change. This is Theo Henderson from Weedian House and I thank you all for listening and may we again meet in the light of understanding. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh man, you guys were awesome. As you can see, this is the site where Tiana Arada was kidnapped by law enforcement and, uh, and the other activists were assaulted here. Black Lives Matter does not hate white people or cops. They are speaking up for the injustices that paid law enforcement officials have and the responsibility that they have for respecting all citizens, armed and unarmed, because its records have shown that they can take armed white criminals that have shot and killed people unarmed and safe and sound they can extend the same courtesy and the same just, uh, constitutional rights for them. The second thing is many uh, people think Black Lives Matter are terrorists. And Black Lives Matter has opposed terrorism at any kind of uh, cost. But unfortunately, these same All Lives Matter people that are Blue Lives Matter are, have been remaining silent on the aggressiveness of neo-Nazis, Flex Lanterns, and any other uh, white extremists. They don't speak out over them, you don't see them at any protests, and you don't see them on the pages. The only time that you hear them talking about Black Lives Matter is to silence the Black Lives Matter cause by using All Lives Matter. This is an example of, black, uh, of, of violence that has occurred by our law enforcement. Defunding the police is only the beginning. We must understand that keeping police officers in a community where they are the aggressor is not the answer. This is Theo Henderson from Weedy Unhoused. I thank you all for listening and may we again meet in the light of understanding. They say in order for us to truly understand one another, we have to walk a mile in their shoes. So far I'm walking a mile in activist Tiana Arada's shoes and learning a lot about her. She is an awesome example of how she is trying to become the change that she wants to see in the world. Unfortunately, a lot of people that uh, disagree with uh, uh, Black Lives Matter and uh, disbanding social justice and equality look at her differently. They look at Black Lives Matter and the activists as some kind of violent criminals. And no exception was San Luis Obispo police officers.
many years ago, Oprah Winfrey said this is the happiest place on earth. I think that's subjective because right now, how could you be happy if you're being kidnapped and, but, uh, and blamed at, uh, for the injustices that you experience at the hands of law enforcement and the society at large here? This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and House. I thank you all for listening. May we again meet in the light of understanding. This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and House. Uh, we just finished having an interview with a couple of witnesses of Tiana Harada's uh, kidnapping. When I first got here, I couldn't help but feel like this was something like out of Mississippi Burn. Because the reason I say that, or maybe I be uh, on, on, on PCP, because of the fact of the matter is when I walked around and I was asking people, particularly whites, they were big, blaming Black Lives Matter as being an outside agitation group, a bunch of terrorists, and you know, the, uh, if you ever watch Mississippi Burger, <laughs> a bunch of outside agitators stirring up the, uh, we don't have the Negro problem was uh, under control until these outside agitators wanted them to vote and things like that. Yeah. And that was exactly, literally, uh, the way it was presented to me. And I was wondering, um, is that indicative of what's going on right now with, 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 with the uh, protests that's going on? Because there's a lot of protests, and obviously the police are signaling, sick, obviously signaling out or singling out people that are speaking out against the injustices that's going on in San Luis Obispo. Well, I mean, let's think about it this way. So you have uh, the people that you ask the questions to, and they say that the outsiders are coming in to, yeah, yeah. you know, Stern aggra things aggravate up. the situation. Yeah, terrorists, right? yeah. Let's think about it this way. The police brings in out outside forces, right, mm -hmm. that deal with bigger situations maybe, or they bring in people who have never dealt with situations like this. Mm -hmm. So we can look at it in both points of view, right? Mm -hmm. So the police are bringing in outside forces to agitate the situation, mm -hmm. and these people are bringing outside forces to agitate the situation. But in reality, um, the agitation that, that, is, that is actually happening, it's, it's the repetitiveness. You get tired, right? So in my opinion, there's no outside uh, influence, you know? If you're, if you're viewing the exact same issue, there is no outside that. You're either, you're either in the box or you're outside of it. Once you're inside the box, you get to see what's going on there. When you're outside of it, you have no idea what's going on. So, so the agitation comes from the constant conversation, and that's what you want. If you're getting someone agitated, then you're doing your job. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you're really pushing someone to see something, and they're like, "Okay, I'll see it." Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in my opinion, you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. You know, like if if you're not getting people agitated, then you better yell a little louder because <laughs> agitation is what's needed right now for people to see what's happening. What? Frederick Douglass said it way back in during the times of uh, slavery and abolishment of that. Agitate, agitate, agitate. And that's the only way you're going to get anything uh, done. Progress never concedes without a demand. And this is one of the demands that Black Lives Matter has been trying to let people understand that there is a problem. And we seem to hit a wall of resistance every time, every generation seems to. And I was wondering at this moment, um, what, uh, what bandaged you to the cause with Tiana Arada? She's someone special. I think when you when you put yourself in a situation like she did, you don't really know what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. until the crowd spits you up and chews you out, and mm -hmm. then you have to roll with the punches. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know supporting her was gonna get so much hate on my company. Mm -hmm. I've come here and there's been you know vandalism on my windows or was vandalism on my house oh my god and i'm not saying this because of her but it, no. it's the outlook of what's happening yeah. right i'm following her and i am observing her and mm -hmm. i'm also 100 percent you know supporting mm -hmm. right or wrong because to be that young to be that noble mm -hmm. to have that much courage and to get sucked in chewed out multiple times but still come out is a hero yeah, <laughs> basically a warrior a hero yeah that's insane by the, by the time she hits 30 it's gonna be a whole other outlook on life mm -hmm. and she's taught me at the age of 30 myself you know she's taught me valuable lessons she's educated me in some things that I never even knew that I needed to know mm -hmm. and I'm just one person you know, mm -hmm. one person. And so because I have a business, I'm, I'm 
using that outlet to discuss, to educate, and to reiterate the learnings that I'm that I'm getting taught because you see a lot of other businesses that are either closed down or they're not doing shit. Mm -hmm. We, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out the way that I wanna go out, mm -hmm. man. You know, we're gonna tell people, you know, that all of this is mm -hmm. happening. We're gonna put it in their face as mm -hmm. much as you have to. Um, and, and consider it to, you know, the people. I noticed another phenomenon too. It's like as well, in the course of this interview, there's been a couple people that have been giving me the thumbs up sign when they see this sign here. And that's another issue is that there's some people that support it secretly, but they are afraid to stand out, and which, which makes it very interesting. Like Tiana is speaking up and standing out fearlessly. You obviously are fearlessly uh, supporting her. Is that what is causing the fear of them not just speaking out and standing with a, a in solidarity with the movement? not just secretly doing stuff, you know. I mean, obviously people have their own uh, agenda. They all have their, you have a friend circle, right? And you always have that one guy or that one woman. She's always a drug or the liar or the pig of the group or whatever. You always have the one that's outspoken and then you have the ones that follow. In my opinion, the people who, who generally are keeping quiet is because they're afraid to not be accepted by their current situation. Mm -hmm. Because in reality, you know, if if you were open to the discussion, if you were, you know, out there, you know, like Tiana or like our business or my employees, mm -hmm. then A, you're either gonna get accepted or not. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is to touch base on that, we're hired, like we, we've been trying to hire some people and we've been telling them straight up, look, a lot of people hate our business, mm -hmm. and and you gotta roll with that. But a lot of people love it, mm -hmm. you know. So like, a lot of people are afraid of that hate mm -hmm. by supporting something that they know is true and right. And right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it just it's it, it's different motivations for other people. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky enough to have a core group of people, but I'm also lucky enough to be in this community. Mm -hmm. So for those who are afraid to stand up, like don't be. You got so much support. You got a hell of a lot of support. That's, that's, that's the moral of this story. And this is one of the points that I think we could end it here. This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and House. And I thank you all for listening. And may we again meet in the light of understanding. This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and House for Weedy and House Investigations. If one thing that's taught me about this investigation is America has a track record of silencing its protesters against the injustice that is inflicted by the American citizenry and American law enforcement. Kiana Arada is one of those casualties. She is a long list of people that is fighting for the equality and the safe treatment by law enforcement officials. It is ironic that the very people that she's fighting against have charged her with eight felonies and five misdemeanors in response to the retaliation and the abuse practices that is widespread around the world. There is no justification for you to attack or criminalize a person that is fighting for injustice. They took her, kidnapped her, held her hostage, and created and crafted a press release in order to vilify her. It is very apparent that the FBI or Internal Affairs should be one and to investigate these people instead of them. I hope that we listen to this as well as call to action to free Tiana. Her story is one that's like many other stories in America that doesn't get publicized correctly and fairly. The media is not covering it like it should. The San Luis Police Obispo is sending a message to the young protesters to say, if you protest again too, you will be criminalized as well. They won't come out and say it, but they are sending the message to ripple effect. But the movement will not stop. Black Lives Matter, for those who do not know, is about to protest against the police brutality and killing and abuse that is enacted on black Americans that are here in this country. No one's saying that they're anti-police, but they are anti-injustice. Many times, police escalate. Case in point, the time where they said that this woman and her family had robbed a motorcycle and took them out of the van and held them at gunpoint. Example number two, 
the sheriff's Los Angeles Sheriff's Department has full weaponry out on black teenagers because they are claiming that they had a gun. Yet on that very same notion that there are other white people that have done uh, the same criminal acts or shot uh, people or police officers, they get a burger, they get uh, special treatment, and we have to listen to the sensitivity of their plight or their situation. So let's listen to the sensitivity and plight of Tiana's situation. Tiana is the victim here. She's not a criminal. She has the temerity as a young person that has we come from a long line of civil rights activists that speak out against injustice. And she's another black woman that is singled out, criminalized in a similar vein as Angela Davis. This is our youth who is our future. But we send the message that our future that we cannot and they should not protest and should stay and put their head on the sand. What future are we going to make better if we can't leave the world a better place than when we found it? This is Theo Henderson from Weedy and Howe's Investigation. I thank you all for listening, and may we again meet in the light of understanding.